in Jackson section I.5. So he derived a boundary condition based on Maxwell equations between two media. So the geometry, something like that, there's a surface in the 3D space. So this is representing a surface. Uh, it's a two-dimensional two surface, but uh, difficult to see. But there's separating two regions. One is labeled as one, the other is two. So on the each side, you have the electric field E1 and magnetic induction B1 and then D1 and H1. And you can have a charge and current density rho one and J1. And likewise on side two, you have E2, B2, D2, H2 row two, J2. Okay, so uh, there's uh, there will be boundary condition between uh, this variable one and two, and we'll define a vector n at each point, each point on the surface n as a unit vector normal to the surface n. Okay, so uh, that's the geometry and the Maxwell equation. So you have uh, two equations that involve divergence, like divergence B is zero, okay? Divergence D is rho, the charge density, and then and two more equations involving the curl, so you have curl of E equals to minus partial B partial T. Okay, and then curl of H equals to partial D partial T plus J. Okay, so you have four equations. So from these four equations, you can derive four boundary conditions. So one equation to one boundary condition. Okay, so Jackson used the divergence theorem and the Stokes theorem uh, to derive those boundary conditions. So that is another way to do that by uh, direct derivatives. But then to do the derivatives, uh, you can represent, you need to represent these field quantities using uh, a suitable form. And to represent that they have a jump. So we'll uh, introduce a step function. So a step function will be like, uh, let's define here. So step function theta argument is x is defined as uh, it will be one for x greater than zero and zero for x less than zero. The value for uh, for theta exactly at x equals zero is um, sometimes not quite important. Uh, so you usually don't define that. Uh, if you want, you can define it as one half. Okay, just for con kind of a, a limiting case. Okay, and so the Graphically, it will be, if this is x, this is zero, this line is zero. So theta, theta, x, let's go, go messy here. Theta, x. Yes, uh, some is, will be zero here and then jump to one. Okay, this is x equals zero. Okay, so uh, so that uh, you can use that to represent a jump over a certain uh, location. And one more thing, uh, you can relate the theta function, the step function to the direct delta function that we discussed last time. So um, the relationship is quite simple. It's 
delta x is uh, can take the derivative of the theta function. So you take the derivative, of course, uh, this is uh, not the well-defined derivative on x equals to zero because uh, like what we discussed about delta function is not really well-defined except it's through a integral or a limiting uh, process. So you know, the step function, again, also, you can also define it as a limit. So you have a smooth function, but change quickly near x equals zero. But then in the limiting case, it's like a step. Then you can take the derivative and take the limit, you can get the delta function. But uh, from this definition, quite obviously, uh, when you take a derivative, the, when x is not equal to zero, the derivative is zero because it's just constant. And when you take the derivative over x equals zero, it's infinity because uh, it's a sharp change. So that's uh, satisfy the property of a delta function. And if you integrate this function over a finite range from negative to positive x, then you'll get one because you have a jump of one. Okay, so that satisfy the property of a delta function. All right, so with that, uh, you can write uh, like all these field quantity, all this E and B and all this uh, by uh, like uh, using the step function. But first uh, you need to express a coordinate system relative to the surface. And you can generally argue that you can transform your coordinate system at least locally near the region that you want to consider that uh, this surface can be represented by uh, a coordinate r s equals zero, okay? And then the, the region one will be r, r sub s less than zero, then region two will be r sub s greater than zero, okay? So locally you define something like that. And one more thing, the n unit vector defined on the surface would be simply just gradient of R s evaluated at the s equals zero, or R sub s equals zero. Okay, so that is uh, defined, how n can be defined this way. Okay, so uh, once you have all this information, you can like write down, write down the electric field. So E would be, so there will be two parts. One is uh, region one, so you have E1, and it only exists when Rs is less than zero, so you, uh, you have one minus theta Rs, Rs, R sub S. So when R sub S is negative, then uh, it's one, when R sub S is positive, one minus one is zero, so you get rid of that for region two, and then you have E2, theta, R sub S, okay? Then uh, when R sub S is positive, you have E2, but then uh, theta is one, so one minus one, you cancel this term, so you get E, it's uh, just E2. Okay, so that's the, the way to represent this. And likewise, you can represent B and D and H like uh, using the same way. Now, except that uh, for rho and J is a little uh, complicated. So let's write it separately. So rho will be again like rho one, one minus theta, uh, so S plus rho two, theta, R sub s, but then the right on the surface when R sub s equals zero, the charge density can have a, a so-called surface current, surface surface charge density. So you have a, you have a possibility of a sigma times a delta function, delta sub s. So what it means is that the, the charge density is singular on the surface. Okay, and then uh, have a value sigma. Sigma can still depends on the location on uh, on the surface, but uh, when we consider at near a single point, then uh, it's pretty much like uh, 
doesn't vary when we take the, and we don't need to take derivative, so that doesn't matter. So, and likewise, J, the current density can have J sub one, one minus J to R, R sub S plus J sub two, theta R sub S. And it can also have a surface current density. So we'll call it K and delta R S. And because it's flowing on the surface, so K, that this capital K uh, could offer the capital K dot N will be zero. Okay, because uh, it's the current direction of the current is uh, on the surface, otherwise we'll flow out of the surface and it's uh, infinite. So uh, that will not uh, satisfy the continuous condition. So, uh, so you have the order representation of all the field and charge and current density. Now we can use this uh, form of the fields and use the Maxwell equation to, to derive the uh, boundary condition. So first uh, we consider divergence B equals zero. So now B is uh, like, uh, just like the electric field, but it's B1 and B2 like that. So, uh, so we can take divergence B now goes to divergence of B1, one minus theta R sub S. Divergence of B2, theta, R sub S. Okay, but the B1 and B2s are, they also satisfy the original uh, Maxwell equation. So divergence B1 is zero, divergence B2 is zero. There's uh, another term involving taking the derivative of the theta function. So now uh, to do that, uh, we need a vector identity because uh, you have B1 or B2. In fact, it's, you substitute B in here, so you have B2 minus B1 times theta R sub S, okay? So you have a, a, a situation where you want to take the divergence of, uh, like the formulas, like divergence of a, the, a vector times a scalar. So like if scalar is F times A, the situation is, uh, is, so first you have divergence A, then plus uh, gradient of A, A dot grad F. Okay, so that's the vector identity. Okay, and you apply to here, so this, this derivative is going into here and here, so you already have that. So what you have now is B2 minus B1 dot into gradient of the theta function. And so let's just write it, gradient of theta function of R sub S. Okay. And Gradient of the theta function will be the derivative of the, uh, with respect to R sub S, which give you a delta function by this formula, and then grade times gradient of R, R sub S, which gives you N. So this would be N, B2 minus B1 dot N times the delta function. R sub S, okay, and that equals zero by the divergence B is zero equation. All right, so uh, now we use the property of the delta function. So the delta function when R sub S is not equal to zero, this is zero, so you satisfy this equation. But when R sub S is zero, then delta function is not zero. If the total have to be equal to zero, then this factor in front must be zero. So this means uh, this implied B2 minus B1 dot 
dot into n equals zero. Okay, so this is the first um, first boundary condition using the this first uh, Maxwell equation here. All right. So next one, you can use uh, the same thing on divergence D is flow. Okay, so now we have exactly the same thing. When I take a divergence D, we'll get uh, divergence D. Okay, and D is, uh, you can use something like D, similar here, so D. If you take the this e is d, e d this is d one this is d sub one this is d sub two okay so what you get is divergence of d sub one which will give you row one one minus theta r sub s plus divergence d two will give you row two theta r sub s and then plus the other term or gradient of the theta function will give you d2 minus d1 dot n multiplied by a delta function. Okay, this is by taking the divergence d using this form and using the, the fact that divergence d is equals to rho in on uh, side one and side two Okay, so you get this, and this equals to rho. But rho is given by here, so this term equals this term, this term equals to this term. So this term must equal to this term. And the same argument will imply that uh, d2 minus d1 dot n equals to sigma. Okay, so that uh, that's what we have. Okay, so so that's the second one. Now the next one is uh, the Faraday's law curve. E is minus partial b partial t. So let's uh, do this one. So uh, curl, so cal e is uh, using this formula. So, curl E will be equals to uh, curl E sub one in region one plus uh, curl E sub two on in in region two. Okay, now. Uh, Again, you need to take the derivative of the uh, theta function, actually take the curl of this theta function times the E2 minus E1. Okay, now you, you, you need uh, a, another uh, vector identity, now involving a scalar times a vector, but take the curl of that one. Okay, so, uh, so this one is, uh, you need this relation curl of f times a is equals to f curl of a plus uh, a cos grad f. So that's another vector identity. Okay, so so the there's two terms and then the third term is e2 minus e1. Okay, just by uh, this form, okay, I mean this term, so this is e2 minus e1 and then cos gradient of the theta function is n times the delta function. Okay, so that, uh, that's curl e, curl e is minus, uh, equals to minus partial b partial t, so so, which is equals to minus partial B1, partial T, minus theta, so S plus, actually minus.
minus partial B2, partial T, theta, also S. Okay, and that's it. Uh, when you take the part derivative over time, you don't need the derivative over the theta function because theta function depend only on space. But then uh, on the on each side, in region one and two, curl of E1 is minus partial B1 partial T. So this one equals to that. And then curl of E2 equals to minus partial B2 minus uh, partial B2 partial T. So this one equals to this one. So it means that this equals to zero. So, so it means that uh, this implied E2 minus E1 equals N equals to zero. Okay, so this is, this is the third uh, boundary condition. The last one will be using this equation is uh, the, the Ampere's law. Okay, so basically it's basically the same, except that uh, now uh, E becomes H and then the H, when you take the curl on these two terms, you equals to the right-hand side D partial D partial T plus J on the H terms. So those uh, will be automatically satisfied. The only thing not satisfied is the data function term and the right-hand side is J because J has this K term, okay? And then, um, so what we have is, uh, so the first two term is satisfied. So the finally is, uh, so, uh, but this condition curl H is. So again, you have curl H, curl H1 on psi one plus curl of H2 on psi two plus H2 minus H1 cos N and a delta function Rs. So this one equals to the right hand side is partial D, partial T, uh, partial D, partial T plus J, uh, plus J times uh, at the, yeah. But uh, there's two terms, so, so this equals to the other two terms of running out of space here. So this is equals to partial D1 partial T plus J1 on this side one, then plus partial D2 plus T plus J2 theta R sub S. Now the final term is uh, the surface current density term in J. So it's plus J. And this is a delta function, uh, not J, K. Yes. K, capital K and a delta function uh, space. So compared this one with the next line, so this two, this equals to this one, this equals this one. So this one equals to this one, this implied x2 minus h1 cos n equals to k. Okay, so this would be the last uh, boundary condition. All right, so uh, by this way, you derive the uh, all four boundary condition based on the uh, four Maxwell equation by taking direct derivatives. All right, so that's all the this discussion.